okay, first thing, what is a GNUSTEP application project? The GNUS application project, you see the URL, get non gnu.org. It's a reasonably old project, this has been around since 2002. Currently, it's under the process of being transitioned to a full GNU project after the quest of Richard Kleinman himself. So he wrote me and I'm proud of that. He requested this. And we are making, we are sorting things out. Probably we will split up the project in two and decide which part go into a full blown GNU project and which will remain non GNU, which still means it's open source, of course. It's just not under the GNU umbrella. And probably we need to change the name. You can find us sometimes on our own ILC channel, which is GAP. Just because we didn't like the noise on the Gnuster channel. Now the Gnuster channel is so silent that <laughs> we don't have the noise problem anymore. But <laughs> it's useful because people sometimes expect to ask questions and if they find us an hour, they will try to reply. Calling said, the goal of the Gnuster application project is to fill the gap which Gnuster has of lack of applications. Because GNUSTEP has many users, so it's a, such an ex extensive framework. Some people just use to develop for it and target a specific platform, but actually, since it's an open step child, the goal of it is to have a complete desktop environment with it. Since this is not the explicit goal of the GNUSTEP itself, which provides the GNUSTEP project, which provides the main libraries and a couple of useful application and developer tools, the rest needs to be supplied by other ones. Since picking around applications from different projects is always a mess and confusing for users because you never know where to get things, projects started to cutter and give a consistent environment. I don't know if we are the oldest or if Backbone is older than us. I just know that Backbone is somehow small and so on. Backbone is older, but I think it was funny that. Yes. Officially, it's not, it's not there if you ask them. But they didn't release something for two years or so. So, essentially, we can express that the Gnustep class gap gives you our workspace. A bit are missing, we don't have a window manager and some tools are missing, but you should have a fairly usable environment. What's in gap? The, the project originally started as a porting repository. So Gregory John Casamento, which is currently the Gnustep maintainer and project leader, he had the idea we will look for open step code and port it to Gnustep. Theoretically, it's just like compile, you know, it's not that way, but what we discovered is that open source wasn't around then, it was not well known, so there is no more source of many of the three open step applications which is sad. Some source code is lying around, but the authors are not willing to give it away. So we, we know a couple of applications which we do want and which we don't get. Because the authors say, oh, the code is messy, I don't want to release it. Uh, no way, we have it many times, just give it to us and we clean it up, no way. And finally, so this project is a bit on a dead end, so if some something comes up, we will do it, but Currently, it has been like, of course, the applications we will have, like Time Monitor, which is a CPU monitor, has been ported, it's maintained, so. Now we have the, the Macintosh, the Coco, so there can be applications coming from that side. Sometimes there are abandoned projects for Mac, like not maintained anymore, we can just rescue them, port them. So this is. Other point here, rescued by other project. Sometimes the people start a project, code a bit, and then it remains there. This is typical of open source. We have many examples. Sometimes these applications are fine, or we even depend on them, and you don't have a place to, to download them. Nobody even patches them for, for example, trivial 
API changes we have in GNUSTEP. So uh, essentially it's a bit long, and which is a very, it's a pity. So we try to cut them here, and we have a couple of them. And we, we at least maintain them functional and improve when, when we can. So this is, I think, important for the end user experience because that one place can download them. And there are applications especially written. So when we write a new application, we will put in the team. I myself have not started any extra project anymore. Everything which I have to write, I put it in GAP. So what's been outside for historical reason with them there. Application, utilities, frameworks, everything which is needed. The goal is not to make something which has a lot of kits where we depend on, so you essentially need to install the whole project, which is a bit what it required us. Uh, we try to be more lightweight. This is maybe not so exciting. We don't have so many extra features, but the idea is that GNUSTEP actually has enough feature API features that you can write complete application. If we need a library, we put it here so we complete this. Key people. Gregory John Casamento needs to be mentioned because he is the founder and the project leader, so he needs to know he's, he's in the space and couldn't come to it here. Yeah. So ten us. And he would be quite disappointed with his body. <laughs> 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 then it's me, Nicola Mopola, I'm the co-leader. And I wrote most of the new applications because Greg is more getting reporting and I am about original application, which is like this Pucci, FTP, database in battery monitor and other tools. Then there is Adam Fedor, which is a former NUSET project leader and a gifted programmer. He's a quiet person, but he actually maintains picture frame, which is a very nice and cute application. The other people, some are past committers, which disappeared into nothing, some are not very active, they can be code, can be pilot and disappear for six months. And of course all the original authors, which I don't mention here, they are the authors. Not a long list of active developers. Unfortunately. Let's start with the first application, the Panda Magica. It's an image viewer tool. It was inspired by XV. So you just open you can open images, you have a list of images you can click. See them in a single window, so if you have a list of images like make a slide shot in a window, or you can make a full screen. And it's currently, as far as you know, the only full screen application in GNU Step, which display images, and it works both on the Mac and on GNU Step, because the main goal we defined about one year ago is to try to port every application both on Mac and on GNUSTEP as a demonstration that we can do that. So if it's possible, if it makes sense, if it's not of course a system dependent application, we will do that. And this one works, even the full screen code works on board. Come in. Come in, come in. <laughs> we should have a screenshot here, but since we can see some of this application live after that. It's also a reference for people, for example, wanting to put screen code and scaling code. It should be a lightweight tool, so nothing special. And there's an FTP application. The interface is pretty standard. It's a two-plane local remote host. It tries to implement the complete FTP specification, which is rarely found in modern FTP clients. It has both active, passive, and default modes if you ever need them. They do work. And the special note here it has been ported both to the Macintosh and to Windows. At one point, I rewrote the whole core socket code so that it can work with Windows socket. Because I used plain. Unix way to do it, and it was just not working correctly on Windows. Even if it should, uh, it, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. No way. Now it works, it has some if devs, but this application actually works on the Mac. On Linux, Unix, Solaris, and Windows. This is a major demonstration of the power of the core. It, it may not be perfect, but it's, it's a useful tool, and actually I think they only maintained the FTP application that we used. There were others, but where they are now, I don't know. 
I use it really, I use it daily, so for what I use it works, it has still has some shortcomings. This is a very nice occasion. We, we are playing with that for the, yes, before the beginning. It's a it's a vector graph. It's application. I need to tell you the original author, which is Enrico Sensale, so very prolific Muslim author. He wrote the World War Space system preferences and other utilities, and he started this application like eight years ago. I think it's from 2000. It was called GDO. It was written when Gnustep was still limited. It, has, it was very open step specific, it was script code, and the application just remained in beta for eight years and nobody ever updated again. It, didn't, it wasn't even completely functional with the updated Gnustep. I completely reflected the code, so it has a current class hierarchy. It's, it's clean now, you can extend it. All the comments were written using the Zier path, so it can also work on Coco because Coco doesn't have display post it anymore. So this is now portable code, the performance is good, it's nice. It still makes several tools, it means that, for example, you can draw circles because what's in there was available originally, so I did not yet extend it. I made it work, not when cool, I made the box work. This was to make the box work in a clean way, I need to restrict all the editors. You can say the format is compatible with the old format, even if I don't think there are many files around. But yeah. It works, you can print. It's a document oriented application. I think it's a nice application with a reasonable potential. It still needs some work. It's not official now, they so don't have made yet a release of the new version. This inner space, this is Gregory's personal toy, this is backspace implementation. So essentially you have a screensaver running on your desktop. Oh. Maybe it's not very useful, but it's nice. It was a, a, a GT uh, open step application and it's now here on GNU's step. You can animate backdrops and the modules are compatible the original version, so there are a couple of modules. Not all are included because not every module has a has actual license because people drop them in open source without giving it an open source license, so we can't include them here. And this is one of the problems when we might integrate to a new project. Probably we need to take them out or leave them somewhere else. Of course it's easy to write new ones. Picture frame is uh, Adam's creature. It's called picture frame because the ultimate goal is to make a digital picture frame. So he takes a screen, uses a, an old laptop, ma made a nice one map for the player, <laughs> and it looks very nice. On on their website, there are pictures of it actually walking. This is a screenshot. And he did some nice blending code. It uses alpha channel and it can display additional information like how time when it shoot the picture, the, the weather. It's of course intended to run an antenna that has a kiosk. This is a calculator. It uses of course a reverse Polish notation because this is what I use. HP calculators are just superior and I made it one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was holding nothing a, a real scientific calculator. It's not been released under this name, but you could look for it with its old name, which is RPN Kite or something like that. It's the same code, I just changed the license from BSD to GPF because somebody asked that. I think it was Gregory, he has a little bit of a discussion with PCPI and PSD is too permissive. I like this, you know, no big issue. Yes, it has a couple of short comments, not in much, as much in the Mac version, but in the Gnuster version, but it's a really, really minor thing. So it's the same. There's only 
all the countries to war. There's only one thing which strikes me about everyone's people in here. If there's a mathematician, we can have a discussion on how to implement the exponential function for non integer numbers. <laughs> but I don't think it's interesting. It's just a personal. <laughs> this is maybe the most discussed application lately. Unfortunately, the nice thing is the icon because the rest of the code is still underneath. Why? Because it's changing its so overall. As we discussed for years, we like to have a native news that browser environment for two reasons. First, because our browser is nice to have. Second, because it acts as a testbed for under the underlying HTML framework, mm -hmm. which can be used, of course, outside a browser. Because it can be everywhere when we want to display hypertext. In this case, we use SimpleWebKit, which is a complete implementation in pure Objective-C of the WebKit API from Apple. So it's a complete scratch of right? the which is, of course, a major, a major goal, but it has many advantages. So the code base is cleaner. It's not Objective-C++, so it, it can run from GCC 295 and up, which means it compiles on embedded devices for different platforms, so we can support a much wider audience, including that's more so it's nice. Since it's WebKit compatible, on the Mac you can build the browser. Again, the simple WebKit on Poco or even WebKit itself. So this helps of course debugging and you can even display much better pages. The interface is extremely simple. Currently it just has go button history, but it has bookmarks and it can read and write Safari bookmark from format P list, which is convenient. Of course you can use it. There's a screenshot from the set page. It shows that it's already reasonably working. Not that standard compliant. It's coming up. Not to speak about the browser itself, we can later present a simple web key. They want information. Then we have terminal. Terminal originally is from Backbone, so here we actually made use of the open source concept. We can take other GPA code and put it in our project because essentially Backbone wasn't maintaining it correctly. They did not accept some patches. It was not that portable, and so at the end I just put it in. I asked the author many times, and it was just not progressing as we wish, so we made it compile the latest Moonstep Make 2.0 version, which was a major shift in the make price. We added the I personally added code to make it compile on different platforms because it, you, the emulation is based on the Linux kind of emulation. So for Linux machines it's very convenient because it's extremely compatible, of course, but it used codes which were not available outside of Linux. And I watch a place for this course, so I can run some Solaris. And I know we have, we have a user which uses some Solaris. So it has been a long requested function. It's a multi window terminal. It's one of terminals. It's usable, it works very well. Others framework, which is sadly to say a rescue project because the developer was brilliant, but I think he got busy with other projects. It's an implementation of the address framework of Apple, so API wise is the same, essentially, and it has a front end. You can, so the, the main use is, of course, an address book, but it provides the other services for other applications, and human uses it. So there is one major application which uses the framework, and this is also most important reason why it needs to be kept up to date because other alignment I think it's very convenient, especially on Android devices. You want to have your yeah. addresses ready. It's 
small utility for laptops, battery monitor, time monitor, remote test. These are small applications and we're going to check the design, just check the whole page. Battery monitor just uses your HDPI to display your battery status and some battery information. Time monitor is a CPU monitor, remote desk is a front end to air desktop, so if you need to connect to Windows terminal services, what's convenient, what the parameters, etc. on the line. Nothing special. Flexi sheet. The support. This is, was an application originally written for Coco, so it's open source available on SourceForge, but the project stalled because the author and this day. We wrote him, we are able to contact him, and we have the Office of Permission to put it in our project. It's PR, so it's fine. It's a Quantrix like spreadsheet implementation. If you know Quantrix, it was a special kind of spreadsheet written for OpenStep. At that time, it was a major. Also, Lotus Info, they have the same concept of two competing spreadsheets. They are it's an innovative way of looking at spreadsheets. Let's see, maybe. Yeah, so you have a screen that is not that clear. It's different from Excel because you can write data sets here in columns, and each row is a view of the data set. And then you can drag and create different views of the same data. So it, uh, Excel eventually copied that to the pivot table. But this one is actually more convenient. And the formula are not formulas are not written inside a cell, but they're global for the spreadsheet. Because so when you drag around and you change the view, essentially you, you have a cube and you are slicing it. So it's a simple way of, of looking at a data cube. Gerald called it a hypercube in one dim dimensional cube. Yes. Essentially it's a hypercube. And and the formulas need to work in on all the phases of the cube, this is why you can put them in a static place. Currently, the application is reasonably working on the map. Unfortunately, they also left it like in beta stage. So what, what what we need to do is clean up the existing code for, for bikes, because there are some even on the map. Identify the porting difference between Coco and GNU step, and either walk them around in the flexi sheet code itself, if, if it doesn't count Carlos and Coco, or improve new steps so that support the Coco features. We have a fairly good time, a fairly good job because the application started and we can start working here, which was six months ago was unthinkable because not even the window was coming up. We are using complete NIP loading, so we did not rewrite the interface, we did not change the code. So we just add the main file and some big devs, but very few. So it's, we had yesterday a presentation about portability, and this is a good example of how you can even write the interface. Eventually, we have to do it to tweak some aspects and some fine tunings, but the general concept works quite well. The, the code itself is really portable. Because Mac programmers are quite sloppy, you have seen that on the other project. It works in the Mac, that's fine. The Mac has one architecture. Now, okay, it has two because it has Intel. At that time, it was just probably the same thing. So the code is absolutely reliant on a specific way the API works, the processor works, the operating system works. And so it needs to be made popular because currently, for example, it works reasonably on Intel, on Linux, but we try on other platforms to make it tweak some things. And at the end, when everything is done, we make a release and we can eventually complete the missing features because they are missing features and extend the application. So I think this is a major application which is interesting because there's currently no other there are currently no other open source alternatives to it. So if somebody is interested in this kind of spreadsheet model. Another product project is Beam. It's, a, it's called a simple work processor. This project is called by uh, Gregory. This is two is a Coco port. We took the last version of Beam which runs on 10.4 Mac and 
fold the code and put it in here. And this is goes in the farther down the road because it doesn't even have a make file. We use directly the uh, PBX bit to, to build the X code. So it's pretty much the so extreme way we can completely unmodified. Yes. It has an if there's in the code currently some of them can be removed. And it was a this and flexi sheet really prompted a lot of work, minor and major in GNU that to be proper compatible and it's almost usable now, so it's very nice. Uh, there are still some bugs which prevent it from daily usage and save problems with the uh, at your bundles if you have images and text but it will be worked out and this too is handy if you don't want to use text edit or ink which are <laughs> fairly simple the screenshot is the toolbar gets quite right used the menu gets inherited from the map of course there are separators which make no sense in the yes. but it works so Mm -hmm. It's very good. Uh, the good thing is, if we have the same application on the Mac and on GNU step, which is the goal of the GNU application project to be able to provide this, it's much easier to exchange data. And mm -hmm. you may have a Mac uh, laptop and uh, GNU step workstation, or the other way around. We have a couple of games which are written by a gifted programmer and maintain them and then you screenshot on because games <laughs> you can just play with games and make a screenshot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the future of the most app application project we have a, a other couple of applications we want to implement that are actually half written currently but not maintained because we shifted to the last project we have like taxi sheet and Dina and this put you are consuming all our resources yeah. yeah. because it's just so big and also because these applications are not so blocking but it would be nice to have a login mm -hmm. which would be one way to implement it would be to be compatible with X display manager for example so it would be maybe Unix specific so it would throw a nothing looking and we are thinking about an installer for the end user so if you don't want to use your distribution packages, which is one way to do it. We want to have an installer which just takes like the Apple one, but a bit more advanced because it should be able to handle different architectures. So the best thing we have our draft for us is to have a single tower which contains for example Solaris, Linux, BSD, PowerPC, Intel, and then the installer will install the project one. Dependency tracking and uninstalling are planned. Apple doesn't have them, we have them. Some people say it's not useful because maybe you want to have an interaction with a distribution installer. It depends. Either use completely that one and don't use the installer, or if you have a clean environment. Theoretically, you can just, if you just have GNU stuff, you just can use your installing your install the system and, I mean, how you do on the Mac. I think it depends on the user. If the user wants exactly. to have a, a GNOME environment or maybe Ubuntu or what. It depends and if it's a mixed environment or it's not. Just, it's like if the user decides to use some environment and some packaging tool, maybe you should provide our, our programs for those packages too. Exactly. And somebody who wants to use a pure Qstep environment can then use the installer. It's not a goal not to provide packages for other distributions and stuff. If you want a certain kind of environment, yeah. then there's another tool which is an FS config. The idea would be to have a tool to configure and mount an FS point, just a convenience. Other application of the same kind flow in the air, like. System administration tools, which is mentioned here, so not ma not portable application, but which are convenient. So a bunch of tools to administer users, administer 
your network card, so things you expect from an environment. A web editor, at first we make a browser, then we think about the editor, but sometimes it's handy to have a web editor for writing documentation, so something lightweight. We made something really lightweight where you like write FTF to just write your titles. Oh. Not like not a complete CSS, not not, yeah. not a Dreamweaver replacement, yeah. but a handy tool. To avoid the branding HTML. Yes, exactly. Because often the goal is to have HTML in widespread use, which is what Apple today do. So you have document documentations, uh, program head, notes in HTML. So that's what it is. Tedious. Some people request an instant messaging application. Some people want Java, some people want Microsoft Messenger, Yahoo, ICQ, and you can't name them. There are so many protocols. Even <laughs> next project have paid with that. So they start, they work for a bit, they become incorporated because they depend on some libraries. These libraries are not contained anymore, so there's a new one. It's a moot area, and currently people have started to work on it. More office oriented applications. We have a Excel we have a scratch it, but that's maybe not enough. But writing an office suite is, of course, a big task. Yeah. We have a Lighthouse application for Sun, we will never get them. Mm -hmm. but some people still dream about that, but that's not going to happen. So maybe that's not pressing, but if Step gets more desktop oriented, what might be a point to work on because I think some some of people expect it. I mean KDE has K Office. In GNOME you have GNOME Office because you have GNUMERIC. Uh, of course there is Open Office which is alien to everything. Yeah. So everybody has a, his idea about and we'll see. If other developers come in they may bring new ideas on dictionary tool. This is just the way to. There was one under OpenStep. We might think there is an open dictionary format. We were also thinking about something which integrates with Wikipedia, for example. Just something where you can oh, you know, look up translations. The, hmm? the Webster application. You're thinking about the dig digital Webster application? Yes. Okay. Existed. There is already a, diction a translation dictionary by Robert Burns. So there are ideas for being around it's of course neither pressing, neither uh, <coughs> an essential tool, but it's handy. I mean if you have it convenient no, to look up yeah. water. That's it, essentially. As far yeah. as GAP goes. Uh, or schedule had rise on the list, which is an imaging application. We can I can present that, but uh, given your presence. I, can also, I have also a couple of sites on simple web, which might be of more interest if you are interested on the web framework. May I ask some questions? Yes, of course. Okay. <coughs> How about um, licenses? Uh, you said that you changed one project the license from BSD to. I can do that because I am the original author. Yeah, of course. Author but why, why that? And is it okay to put a um, BSD license project into the gap? Or Theoretically, it's okay because Savannah just requires it's an official open source license, which BSD is. But if we have the ability to change license, we prefer GPM and GPL. Okay. That was decided by Gregory and essentially I agree with because it's in that way, and it's compatible with GNUSTEP itself. Since we've already had license problems in the past, uh, it's better to avoid them from the beginning. Next question. What about GNU main app? Uh, it looks like it's abandoned. Nothing changed over a long time right now. Do you know what's up with the author? What's, what's the author is still alive. <laughs> he says he has patches. If you report problems, he has the attitude it's saying always it's a GNUSTEP problem which is not always true, so it's a bit of a game, who, who's, whose fault is it? And 
I don't like his attitude in this case. It's a brilliant application. I think it's a, one of the most complete applications you have of Linux have. And I used to use it every day for a long time under Linux. We don't have plans to import it in GAP because okay. we don't have the resources to track another big application. So we, we have plans actually to rewrite the code if the, the whole GUI is hard coded. Is hard -coded yes. in? So on the Mac, the Mac port uses NIPS and the news port uses hard coding of GUI with several applications too. Terminal is also completely hard coded because some authors like that way. And at the end, we one idea, Gregory, of course, because he's a common thing that everything should use Chrome. For Terminal, we already have the idea to write the interface to use Chrome because it's more maintainable. You can translate it because we are going to provide translations because some people request translations, which is, of course, correct. And with Chrome file, it's easy. Just provide another Chrome file in a language model that do that with. Localized pain, you can do it. It's a useless pain. So. Yeah. yeah. And the same should be done for new mail. Yeah. But the idea is if we do that and we send him patches, what will he, he do with these patches? Okay, it's not very responsive to external. Uh, he has actually at the. He has provided Nike towers on his yeah, website. Really? So, yes, they're not. It's not updated, but it's much better than the last release. Okay. So it has features like red eyes. Uh, I don't know what, why they release never get up. Maybe you should um, poke them a little bit. We do that. Uh, maybe I make myself too or whatever. Yes. Maybe if it's always the same person poking, yeah. the, the whole community is poking because I know that it has a wider usage. Uh, yeah. I mean, the guy was contacted by Apple to teach. Apple Mail and especially the, the mine thing of country mine to be used by Apple. I don't know if at the end it happened. That speaks about the quality of this mine thing. Or okay. He told me that one. Um, it's used by some codex software, the mine, the country mine thing. Yeah, I do you? Do you <laughs> yes. But do you plan modernizing the interface of several applications, like adding the uh, those toolbars and stuff like that? Some already have toolbars, some are in Yes or no. It, it depends on application. For some applications, definitely, I'm going to definitely update the graphics interface, which is outdated and incomplete. And I want first to make a release like it is, the, yeah, okay. the original one, and then I plan to change the inspectors and update it to sort of be more uh, core in the loop, like okay. use color waves, sliders instead of. Do you know um, some, some uh, um, remarks? Do you know Bookmarker, written by Markus Müller? No. It's a small bookmarking application, which. Um, what's the word in it in English? Type in German and type in Manage? Oh yeah, which manages your bookmarks and can open bookmarks from from within the application. It's a central book, central place to manage all your bookmarks. And mm -hmm. he ported it to Knuster once, but then he ended up there's no use for it in Knuster because there is there no, no there's no, no Knuster application who opens or sends them sends them URLs. So maybe you should talk to him. We can. I'm He's not around here at first now? He was here yesterday. Okay, we can, small guy. We, we, can we, we can talk to him because I added a, there is an experimental uh, support for services. I hope if you know Mac, you know there are services. And on the Mac, you can already use the Fuji and say open URL into. So it should be easily integratable. And I tried to hack this on GNUSTEP and it works. You have, a, you have a URL in, uh, in mail, you can double click on it currently, but you can select it and say it's open a, it's a full box. creature bookmark application. Maybe you you could have good use of it. I, I don't know if, if he integrates, for example, with Safari. I don't know how he does it, but we can talk. I mean, yeah, yeah, my yeah, feel yeah, is yeah, it's yeah. compatible with the, the Safari one. Yeah, 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 there yeah, is yeah. the same service. A little bit given up on it too because 
He hasn't much time for it, whatever. Maybe you could ask him for if it. If it works on the Mac and it's yeah. one of the keywords it is integration, so the more we integrate, the, the more complete the user experience it. So did you look also on other projects from the Mac side like um, Cyberduck and Colloquy? Cyberduck? Cyberduck is an FTP uh, application. I don't know that one. Maybe I'll show you it later. I remember so the yellow dog. Yellow rubber duck icon. I remember Cyberduck as an open dog web browser. I mean browser. Yeah, duck, yeah. duck. It's like, a, like, a, like the um, Donald Duck. No, the, the only FTP application I know was WIPO, which was interesting but in some sense is broken by design and it implemented only passive FTP so I ended up buying my Do you know Colloquy? I don't know how it's... Um, how it's um, no, I don't... I, I know it exists but I never used it and... It's a, a chat application and... I think that it's why guys use it right? Yeah, they, they use the, the, it has support for that special protocol that Thai guys use, this slick protocol. But it's a cocoa application and it could be, maybe could be ported. Maybe it could be ported. And then the uh, open office guys are planning to use cocoa for the Mac port. Actually, I know there has been talks about that, but... I think we can have a short presentation on the simple web kit. Yes, we can. We time. This is the core of this Gucci. I said. The goal is to provide a web rendering engine framework. It's part and it's part of GNU step. So it's it's an official project. It's under the GNU umbrella. The main author is Nicolas Schaller, who's the manager, founder, and CEO of Golden Delicious Computers. His main goal is to Target uh, handheld devices. I have his documentation here, business documentation here. He is the importer of this Latex computer. He works on the open motor, DAOs, and all those small, small and nifty tools. So he needed a small web engine. He's the founder and the main programmer. That's all done for the work net. Then there's me. I'm the tester. I'm the guy who insisted that he put his code open source and new step and I maintain the port to make the main files. And since I use it in this Pucci, at the end I also test the result. I also mentioned Fred Keeper, which is a current GUI maintainer. He did not write a single line of code in simple web bit, but he has been very kind in fixing bugs and completing GUI so that it works. Uh, because the WebKit engine is really taking out the maximum of GNU step to it because it uses a text active NS text attribute thing inside a text cell to display the whole web page. So it's a, it's an interesting approach. It works. It can work, of course, if there are no bugs. <laughs> can it can it be feature complete in the end? Can it display tables and stuff like that? Theoretically, yes. It can. It's not uh, tables is the most complicated thing, but it's hard working on Mac 10.5. Mac 10.5 has a table which can be embedded in text view. So it, since it can be done, it's just a matter of coding it. Okay, it's not in it's not in Kinoo itself. It's no, not yet. Yeah. Okay. So what what the main features? It should be a web compatible drop in replacement. So the API is exactly the same. And in fact, the demonstration as this Pucci on the Mac can be combined either with the Coco WebKit or simple WebKit just by linking different targets to run and the same application work. It's not the same binary for the set of reason of how Apple manages frameworks, but it's not a big hassle. 
some point, we are cross-platform, really cross-platform, since GNUSTEP is cross-platform and the code is entirely based on Proco libraries. We work on GNUSTEP. It works on Proco. So the author continues to check the same code on Proco, GNUSTEP, and MyStep. So we see the differences. What is MyStep? MyStep is like a smaller cousin. It's an it's a new step environment optimized for very small devices. So it's for handheld time devices. The author is not here to show it. We are tested on many architectures since new step works. We have tested on Solaris, on BSD, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, Linux, Linux Fire PC. Some platforms were not so easy. For example, we know that Spark has issues with nil structures and other things. So we work. I don't think we're people that well because they don't need to. And pure objective C, that is, I will say it loud again, it's no objective C plus plus merge because Apple made an aluminium. It combines from GCC to 95 upwards. So this makes us extremely portable and having support for all the compilers is very convenient for strange architectures. So mm -hmm. on Linux we have always 4.1, 4.2, whatever. On other platforms it's not always the way or there are bugs. So it's convenient to support any compiler. In fact, we run on Perl. We are one of the very, very few browsers that run in Africa in Perl and work. I hope we still work. We worked one month ago, so. <laughs> And just can I mention Solaris 2.5 on Spark? Let's put your hands. Open this this pack where there are very few browsers we run. The footprint is small, so the unstripped binary is between one and three megabytes, depends on the processor architecture, of course. If you strip it, the size goes down further. So this is probably the heritage from being a embedded uh, framework. Possible uses, browsers, both on workstation and handheld. So the goal is, for example, if you need to browse. But it goes further, since it's a web kit, the goals are similar to the web kit itself. So you can have help and documentation viewers, which read HTML. And one of the extensions to return to Bluemail is to support the viewing of HTML mail, of HTML mail in mail applications. We have yeah. asked Ludovic to look about it because currently the framework is sufficiently complete to support at least a simple email and yeah. HTML attachment. So the rendering of simple styles and headers uh, is enough. So it would be already a big improvement. And another usage is like kind of this is not implemented. It's on it's not my to-do list. Because everyone wants it and nobody wants to actually code it. It's, it's in my step. So, no step can support it for sure. It's just a matter of writing it a bit differently. Converting HTML to an MTF document. Since we display an NS attributed screen, you can do that conversion and it can be very convenient sometimes. But in the near future, we need to fix some essential issues like line items, tables, there are some bugs. We do have potential for JavaScript support, so our goals are probably much wider than, for example, other embedded and small browsers like Dillo. So maybe you should also uh, talk to David Chisnell. He's very advanced, but when it comes to uh, runtime, we can language ask features him. and stuff like that. And he implemented several languages and scripting stuff. And maybe he's the right maybe person to talk to. We have a JavaScript interpreter, so that one is pretty basic, but we can at least pass the syntax much better than other simple browsers. Of course, it's, it's not Mozilla, but Zillow bugs and some pages where we at least don't display anything because we pass part to the page. And another thing is CSS, at least inline style attributes. So complete CSS support is very difficult, but modern HTML. Uh, 
they call standard HTML attributes as CSS inline. And so it's, it's still HTML as far as features go. So the DOM tree you get is very similar, but it's written differently. And right now it's just ignored. So adding that should not be too difficult. And of course, tons of bug fixes. Uh, in the long term roadmap, so where, where do we want to go? It would be nice to have a complete JavaScript support, at least as far as ECMAScript specification goes, which doesn't mean you can do any JavaScript page because that's, there are so many queries and what's around, but at least you know you have some JavaScript you can use for, <coughs> for example, applications like help and most compatible pages at least. CSS 1 and 2 is on the to-do list, but that will be probably the most difficult part. Speed improvements. There can be many. There should be both optimization of the parser and in the way we display things because since we use a text view, we need to be a bit smart on what we update, otherwise we spread the text view blow in a rack a bit too much. <coughs> Other bug fixing, I can write it on every page bug fixing. And the goal of the author, Nicholas, is to have SVG processing because for handheld devices it can be very convenient. I know that not many web pages actually use it, but it's a nice feature, I think, because it's standard. And if you need to display graphics inside a page, it should be standard. If not, don't know why. That's it. That was simple web kit. And if somebody else is instead interested in price, which was listed on the program, he can ask me personally go to the website. But are there questions? I think I made up my time. Yeah, it so. Everybody else came late. We can see some applications live. What's next on the agenda? Next is um, Quentin in exchange for Nicolas Ward, but he did not show up yet. Hmm. <laughs> if he did show not show up, we can, for example, look at Graphos. <coughs> which is a drawing application, where you can show <coughs> vector drawing using NSPC path. These are squares, but I think they're as ZFAT. And of course, for excellent ZFAT support. You can do anything. Here we are using the art backend, which just optimizes <coughs> this kind of graphics. Okay, if you are really adventurous, we can try to launch with Pucci if we have network connection. We have a project for it. Because of the net and something in this place. But do you want more? Do you want? At least you believe it. We can check our test files and see what we can 
but to see the box with the shortcomings it has. I can we should have here uh, For example, we see the title here, but not correctly on the correct font, which is what's coming with new step. And we have support for quite complete uh, of special characters like umlaut ligatures. Okay. The translation for five characters is good, and the translation table is quite standard complete, which was a lot of work, because there are hundreds of symbols up there to code within the Unicode and the display. But we see, for example, that the list is not complete, but it's coming along nice. This is intentional that we can save the bookmarks because we don't have the right to write them. But these questions, otherwise we Wait for a point in the house. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.